The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Sam Spade, Detective Agency. Oh, murder. Oh, Sam. Have you had a hard day? Murderous? Nine this morning, I grinned through 25 poses, count them, over dishes of all 25 varieties of Sanderson succulent soup, a meal in a can. Then, uh, Really, Sam? Then I was imprisoned in a plush chair for two hours with a glass in my hand. No. Yes, a Brannigan's bog, the whiskey that smells like old Ireland. It sounds interesting. It wasn't. They wouldn't let me touch it till after. Ah. And for the rest of the afternoon, I've been pulling up my trousers. Woo! Or a series of leg art shots, which will bear the legend, Samuel Spade, prominent San Francisco detective, says... McGonagall's grip tight is the garter for me. Oh, Sam, how thrilling to be prominent. Maybe so, maybe so, but fame is a sometime thing, sweetheart. Just a flash bulb in the pan, uh, as you will agree, when you have heard my report on the cheesecake caper. <laughs> To be in pictures. Oh. I'm beautiful to see. Oh, Sam. Mm. It was at the top of the caper. Yes, and as it developed, it was a snap. Does that make you shatter? Oh, Sam. Well, have you got any photography jokes? No. All right, then. We just saved 30 seconds. <laughs> and uh, by the way, Miss Brain, statistics prove that nine out of ten private secretaries have the pencil ready when the boss comes in. Why do you always have to be number ten? Well, I'm ready, Sam. Here, here's the pencil. Well, that's better. Got... <sighs> Two, Homicide Division, San Francisco Police Department. Attention, Lieutenant Kelsey from Samuel Spade. License number 17596. Subject, the cheesecake caper. Dear Kelsey. Cheesecake. Down. Cheesecake, to me, was something that cost 25 cents on the a la carte side of a menu up until now. As a matter of fact, the cheesecake theme didn't make itself felt until sometime after the beginning of this, which was a phone call at high noon, just as I was wondering where I'd eat. Sam Spade. Mr. Spade, i got to see you right away. What are you doing? About to go to lunch. Who's this? Uh, I'll tell you later. i got to see you first. Right now. Well, all right. You want to come to my office? Or... No. No. I'm at Barney's Grill. You know where that is? Yeah, I know where that is. Who will I ask for? Just go in and order a sandwich. Nobody sent for you, see? You just come in for lunch. I just go... Uh, let me get this straight now. Are you hiring me? Yeah. Yeah. Fifty bucks in the All I got. But remember, you don't know nothing about it, see? You just came by for lunch. <laughs> Wednesday is when they have sour broughton and potato pancakes at Barney's. The Senate has been only that very morning that my secretary, Miss Effie Perrine, had looked at my figure, of which she is usually inordinately fond, and made certain remarks to the effect that a few of my pounds needed to be evaluated. So I decided on a sandwich. The business crowd hadn't arrived, so I slid into a vacant booth, ordered my sandwich, and waited for something to happen. Well, Spade. Huh? You remember me, Spade, said Malloy? Yeah, afraid so. Last I heard, you were in Cleveland. Yeah, but I'm in San Francisco now. Well, Cleveland's gain is our loss. I like it here. Maybe they had a hot spell in Cleveland, huh? Ah, uh, heat never bothered me much. Yeah, you ought to be used to that by now. <laughs> Let's talk about you, Spade. How's business, huh? Please, I'm eating. Yeah, yeah, so I noticed. Uh, you like Barney's, huh? As good as the next joint, yeah. Uh, I mean, you come in here all the time, regularly. You ain't here on business now, are you, Spade? Uh, sure, Freddy, sure. Yeah? Yeah, making a little deal. Yeah, yeah. who with? Fine. Corned beef on rye. Oh. Uh, sir, one corned yeah. beef on... What's the matter? Oh, uh, the, the cook lost it up, sir. You said rye, didn't you? This here's wheat. Well, that's all right. Here. No, no, no. I'll, I'll fix it up, sir. Only I'll take... forget it. I said wheat's all right. Now, uh, how about a cup of coffee and I'm all set? Uh, Denny. Yeah? You said you were going off duty. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, I, I, I'm just finishing up a couple of orders. I, uh, I, I'll get my hat. Never mind the hat. Come on, Denny. I'm parked out front. I, I hate to get in wrong with the cops. Yeah. Okay. Uh, tell the boss I... I already told the boss. Get going. So long, Spade. Just stay there and enjoy your sandwich, sir. Yeah, so long. The waiter, of course, was the guy who called me, a white-faced young kid sweating with his black tie up under his left ear. They walked outside and got into a car parked in front of a restaurant. Of all things, a limousine with a liveried chauffeur. I watched through the front door as it pulled away, picked up the license number, and called the Department of Motor Vehicles. The car belonged to Mike Sheldon, known to the voters of the North Beach section as Uncle Mike, a white-haired, jolly-faced gentleman of dubious means and still more dubious methods who had something to do with politics. What he had to do with a weasel like Freddie Malloy, much less a poor waiter boy at Barney's, was something to ponder. I sidled back to my booth and attacked the corned beef on wheat. 
My uh, teeth, instead of going all the way through the sandwich, which is the way I like it, struck something firm and unyielding. I pulled from between the lettuce and the bread a wax paper envelope. Inside was a $50 bill and a small photograph of a blonde. Denny, the waiter, had scribbled three words in the corner of it. Find this girl. Uh, you care for some more coffee, sir? I got some uh, more Yeah, more. yeah, yeah. Bring the pot, will you? Yes. And, uh, waiter. Yes, sir? Uh, this, uh, Denny, the kid who was just here. What's yeah. his last name? Denny? Uh, it's Weston. Denny yeah, Weston. Yeah, yeah, okay. Where's he live, you know? Well, I'm not sure. I think he has an apartment out around Larkin Street somewhere, but I'm not sure. He's a funny kid. Yeah, what's funny about him? Well, I mean, working as a waiter in a joint like this when his, his sister had all that dough living in that Knob Hill apartment and all, you Who's know. Who's his sister? Monica Weston. You must have heard of her. She used to be a dancer in some joint over in North Beach. Well, I don't get around much anymore. Well, you saw the papers, didn't you? She was in the papers? Yeah, committed suicide. Then he nearly went off his rocker. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look, is uh, this here his sister? Oh, let me see. No, no, no. Monica was a redhead. This here's a blonde. Well, I'd better get you that coffee while it's out. Be right with you. I examined my sandwich for further clothes, found nothing except corned beef, so I put it back together and began to eat it while I scrutinized the picture of the plant. A nice-looking girl in her 20s, no scars, birthmarks, buck teeth, or anything else to set her apart from roughly 25,000 other blondes in San Francisco. There were a couple of points, though. The picture was about two inches square, showing her head and shoulders, and her hand was up to her face as if she was surprised at something near the camera. On one of her fingers was a ring, which I couldn't quite make out. In the back of the picture were the letters L-T. Now, this is probably the credit stamp of some professional photographer. I abandoned my sandwich, thumbed through the yellow section of the phone book, and stifled a cry of triumph as I discovered the firm of Leonard and Perkins Photographers with an office on Bush Street, where forthwith I went. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Mr. State. I don't think we did that here. You're sure that's not your mark on the back, Mr. Leonard? Well, positive. And anyway, that's not the kind of work we do. Looks like an outdoor flash shot. Ours is all studio stuff. Funny trimming it down like that. Trimming it down? Yeah, this is probably a standard 8 by 10 Someone just caught the center out of it. Thanks very much. Bye. So I went to the telephone book again, but instead of looking for the L-T as the front of Mrs. of the firm, I looked for them in the middle, since both ends of the photographer's credit stamp were trimmed off. And I ran across an outfit called Cal Pictures on Harrison Street. <laughs> I'd uh, like to speak to the proprietor, please. There's three of them. Mr. Murphy, Mr. Silverian, Mr. Brennett. Take your pick. Uh, Murphy will do. He's out. How about Silverian? Tied up with Mr. Brennett. Uh-huh. Where are they tied up? First door to your right. That's the main studio. Do not enter if the red light is on. Heaven for fun. No, no, no. Now, will you let me go with my... No, there is no... I have seen photographers at work in my time, but not like this. I saw now why they were tied up. They were fit to be tied. In the middle of the studio was a mass of equipment that looked like a cross between the Palomar telescope and an atom smasher with what seemed to be a stretched out accordion on the bottom. All of it pointed at something lit up by floodlights on a small table. When I got up close, I found out what it was. Brennus and Sylvaria were photographing a plate of pork and beans. Now, for crying out loud, look at that pork. What is the matter with that pork? What, what's the matter with it? It just lies there. What do you expect it to do, Chemmy? Uh, excuse me, fellas, I, uh... When did we hire you? Uh, you didn't. I only wanted oh, to, Oh, uh... don't pay any attention to I'm him, not... John. Now, come on, come on, focus. Focus. Now, what the you? Let... Why waste the shot? You know, you know what he said? The pork's got to have... Get up and go. Get yeah, up and well, go. It's got to look sucking. It's got to look married to those beans. What do you want me to do, Spring? With orange oh, look, fellas, I really don't want to interrupt. No good, Silveria. You know what they're going to run under the shot, don't you? Loose bombs, New England pork and beans, married in the can. Can I be best man? What? Okay, what do you want? I'm only Sam Spade, a private detective, trying to locate this girl here. What girl? Ever seen her? Sure, sure. Where? Well, this is our shot. Huh? Well, you, you remember, Al, the cheesecake job the other night. Look at it. Oh, yeah. The cheesecake job? Down at the railroad. Yeah, that was for Norby's Nifty Nylon. You mean this girl's a model? No, no, no. She walked in front of the camera at just the wrong time and loused up the shot. We had to shoot it over. Yeah, we, we had a model with a pair of Norby's Nylons on, see? 
a uh, well-known brand of stocking, and the idea was to stand her up next to a train coming down at the at depot the here. Oh, then what we tried uh, to do was get a shot of her fixing her guard, her uh, leg guard, you know. Yeah. Sure, fire. Yeah, with stuff. a lot of admiring glances from the crowd. From well, the yeah. crowd, brand new idea, yeah. real train, real station, real people. Human documentary. Do- yeah. yeah. So nice. Al sets up the camera, and the model makes with a guard, and I whistle to get the crowd's eye, and we set off the flash. But uh, but the dame here walked in front of the camera. However, it was not her fault. No, no, it was, no, it was an awful nice kid. We yeah, told her to drop by, we'd give her the shot. Great. Right. Swell. Uh, what's her name? I, I don't know her name. Did she come by? Yeah, a couple of mornings ago. I gave her the print and the negative, too. Got any other copies of it? Well, I don't know. It'll take us a while to check the file. Oh, it's third. Yeah, yeah well, uh, well, look, do that, will you? And, and if you find anything, here's my phone number. Yeah, yeah. Now, as I was saying about that fork, John, Again with a your fork, fork told... is your fork. There is nothing you can do to glamorize it. I glamorize a number of forks. So I bought an afternoon paper and went back to the office to take a load off my feet and mull over this latest turn of events. I mulled, decided to contact Denny Weston, my client, found his phone number in the book, and was about to call when the phone went off my hand. Sam Spade. Spade, this is Denny Weston, the waiter uh, on the guide. No, yeah, I, yeah, I know. I was about to call you. Don't. Don't call me. You understand? You don't know me. I never saw you. Wait a minute now. I've been chasing that blonde all afternoon. You got your 50 bucks, didn't you? What's the matter? Is Freddy standing there with a gun at your back? Shut up about Freddy. Okay, then let's talk about your sister Monica, or maybe this blonde you stuck in my corned beef sandwich. And don't let Freddy throw a scare into you. Hello. Hello, Denny? Ah. So, uh, that left me with a set of grim suspicions, a $50 bill, and no client. I put my feet up in the desk and opened the paper. Then I put my feet back down on the floor. On the front page was a picture of my blonde with a caption over it reading, You know this girl. I took the other picture out of my pocket and compared them. They were the same except for one thing. The picture in the paper was taken on a slab in the city morgue. Putting my shoes back on, I read the article under the picture of my blonde. It was simple enough. She'd turned up in the bay near the yacht harbor an hour before with a bullet in her back. The paper said nothing about identification. It didn't have to. Knowing you as I do, Lieutenant, I realized if there had been anything on the body to identify it, the picture wouldn't have been in the paper. Now, pictures, British. Uh, this is Spade. You got anything on that front of the blonde? Well, we're still on the pork and beans. Yeah, well, drop it for now, will you, and check the files. And if you find the print, sit out or put it in the safe or something. Understand? Uh, but the pork and the beans... The pork and beans will have to wait until we find who put the lady in the bay. I had a pretty good idea who put the lady in the bay, but why and how to prove it was something else again. So I turned back to the picture, got out my 15-cent store magnifying glass, and took a closer look at the ring in her hand. It seemed to be black, shaped like a shield with a gold center that looked like a dagger and a mask. Five telephone calls later, I found the company that made it for an honor society at the University of California. Blue and gold office. Uh, is that the campus yearbook, the blue and gold? Yes, sir, that's right. Do you uh, publish the pictures of the members of the Mask and Dagger Society? We sure do. Who is this? Uh, my name is Spade. I'm trying to locate one of the members of the society. Have you got the yearbook files in your office? Clear back to 1895. Well, good. Get out the books from about 1940 on, will you? I'll be over in a half hour. We found her in the class of 1941. Her name was Helen McKelvey. I uh, understand a Miss Helen McKelvey lives here. No. No, I never heard of her. Oh, wait a minute. I... I'm not going to hurt you. You're the landlady here, aren't you? I tell you, I don't know any McKelvey. Well, the city directly lists her at this address. We must be a mistake. Oh, I don't Please, think so. I don't know anything. I tell Come you. Come on, now. I... Sit down. Do you good to get it off your mind. There you are. Sit down. I, I don't know anything. I, I, oh, I look, don't that's know. not going to help any. I told you, I'm on your side. Who are you? Sam State. I'm a private detective. Now, uh, you know where Helen McKelvey is right now, I suppose. Yes, I do. Well, I'm trying to find out who put her there and why. Then what? I'll hang it on him if I can. That's why I'm here. Now, uh, 
Tell me, what did Helen have to do with Mike Sheldon? Come on. Well, I, I don't know much about it. She's a lovely girl. Extreme. She knows she kept things to herself mostly. Mm, what kind of things? Well, she was doing some kind of political work in the North Beach district. You mean she was working for Mike Sheldon? Oh, against him. Oh? They were trying to defeat him, expose his rackets and his gambling, and heaven knows what else he was involved in. Heaven knows indeed. Well, she took it all so seriously. Petitions and leaflets and telephone calls. I see. I kept telling her she was working too hard. And the help would go. And it did. Last election time... She spent a week in the hospital. But it was all useless. Sheldon was too big, too powerful. Why, he never even heard of her. I can guarantee he didn't know her by sight. I know. And then last week, a strange thing happened. I arranged for her to spend the weekend with my sister in Palo Alto. Mm-hmm. She came back Monday, terribly excited, that at last she had a weapon against Mike Sheldon. What did she mean? I don't know. But it wasn't just Sheldon. It was his whole organization. She sounded crazy, like she was going to tackle them all by herself. Then what? And she packed her suitcase and moved out to some hotel. He wouldn't stay where. I was worried about her. I looked through her room afterwards. And that's when I found this clipping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Thursday's Chronicle. Does it help? Police seek motive and showgirl suicide. Investigation of circumstances surrounding the suicide of Monica Weston, nightclub dancer, moved into his third day without producing a reason why the girl apparently took her own life Friday night by leaping from a southbound train. Train! I took off the headquarters where, as you'll recall, Kelsey, we went over the file on the showgirl capers. You'll also recall we came up with nothing that wasn't in the newspaper. The girl had apparently climbed aboard the train at 3rd and Townsend, eased down the aisle to the end of the car where a porter had left the door open, and flung herself off on a straightaway stretch near South City where the train hits it up around 70 miles an hour. She'd been pretty, unaccountably prosperous, and hardly a candidate for suicide. But nothing had turned up in her background to set her up as a candidate for murder, either. So that's where it stood. Two dead young ladies and a missing cheesecake photograph of Norby's nifty nylon. Feeling this is enough for a day, I limped back to my apartment. I tossed my hat in bed and started to pour myself a drink. I ain't ever going to do that, Spade. Huh? Oh, Freddy. <laughs> Dumb stunt tossing your hat on a bed, Spade? No, it's not so bad, Freddy. Well, well, I expect to go home to a cold, empty apartment and I find you. <laughs> How about a drink? Oh, no, thanks. I didn't come to drink. Oh, how'd you get in? Walk under the door? Oh, in a gay mood, ain't you? I'm a cheerful type. Had a busy day, sir? Oh, ran a few errands. Uh, say, uh, you know, there's an ugly rumor running around town, Freddy. Huh? They're saying Uncle Mike Sheldon played sucker for this Monica Weston dame, but she was shaking him down and he got tired of it, what with the election coming up and all. Yeah? It's a fact. And they say she didn't commit suicide at all. Well, where'd you hear this? In Union Square while I was feeding the pigeons. You think I'm kidding, huh? You think I'm kidding? Now, wait. You know what happens to boys who play with guns, Freddy? Shut up. Go on, go on, answer. Okay. Hello. Mr. Speed? Yeah? Uh, Silver and Cal Pictures. Uh-huh. Uh, listen, about that uh, cheesecake shot. Oh, now, Luella, don't take on. So I didn't mean it that way. Luella? Uh... Uh, no, no, I'm talking about the uh, cheesecake shop down at the depot. Luella, honey, the girl is only a good friend. Uh, it's all your imagination. Well, uh, uh, it's not uh, my imagination. We found the print in the files, and it's here. The secretary just pulled a boner. Whatever do you mean? Uh, someone named Mike Sheldon called, and she told him that we had it. Now, she always waited to pick no, it up. Uh, no, 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 uh, listen, Luella, don't uh, do it. I'll be right down. Sorry, Freddy, I... No, 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 you ain't going nowhere, Freddy. Look, Freddy... This girl, she's all worked up about nothing. I, uh... Even the pigeons, huh? <laughs> You want to know what you were doing, Steve? What? I'll tell you. 1.30 p.m. Went to a photographer's on Harrison Street. 3 p.m. across to the campus at Berkeley. Then after 4 to a room and house on Bay Street. And from 5.30 to 7 at headquarters. Even the pigeons, huh? <laughs> You're just like Luella, Freddie. Your imagination's running away with you. Come on, have a drink. Now, I told you, I don't want to drink. <laughs> The bottle was half full, but it seemed like a good investment. Freddy took it just over the left ear, sighed, and sat on the floor. I dragged him into the closet, locked it, and took her off for Cal Pickens. All right. All right, Al. Have a 
your way. Well, well I... if we lose a new Tom New England bean account, don't come sniveling to me. Where's the picture? Uh, oh, hello, hello, Spade. Oh, come on, John. Now focus down on it. Let's get this thing. The beans. Two days' work. Hey, what's the big idea? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, fellas. I accidentally hit it with my elbow. I'll buy you a new can tomorrow. Where's the picture? On the table there. <laughs> I brought it over the floodlight and looked at it. The blonde was in the foreground, blocking out the model of the garter. But the shot wasn't entirely worthless, since directly behind her, about to get on the train, looking squarely into the camera, was Monica Weston, the dead showgirl. And with her, with his white mane of flying, was you-know-who. Now, wait a minute. You can't find him like Shut up. All right, hold it, boys. I ducked out of the circle of light as they came in. Sheldon first and three others. The gun in my hand made me feel better, but not much better. They closed the door and the room was pitch dark again, except for the spot of light in the center. Okay. Okay, Spade, where is it? I know you're in there, Spade. You're a little late, Sheldon. We sent it to headquarters. Yeah? Well, I think you've got it right here. She had a negative, you know. Mailed them around like postcard. I'm not worried about the others. Come on, now, let's have it. You hear what I said, Spade? Yeah. Come and get it. Okay. Now, hold it, boys. Okay, Spade. I'll come and get it. Good old new farm Spade. He started to me, stepped squarely on the porch, looped the hook, knocked over the light stand, and we were all in the dark. I groped my way toward the door, came up against a shelf full of supplies, and somebody rammed me by the stir, and the shelf went over. It sounded like a machine gun company on battle maneuvers. The mob hit the door in a rush, all that is except Sheldon, whom we found when we finally got the lights back on, trying to untangle himself from A, the floodlight stand, B, the table that had held the pork and beans, and C, 50 feet of light cable. So Barrier was sitting in the middle of everything, sobbing softly. Three brand new crates. Four hundred and fifty bucks worth of flat. And our last can of nuts, bones, pork, and beans. Uh... And that, Kelsey, if I wind for that, you now have in your hands my account of the affair, plus the cheesecake photograph, plus Michael Sheldon, who is, I admit, a fairly solid adversary. But of course, this is fairly solid ammunition. Uh, period, and a report. Oh. Uh, F, uh, make an extra copy of that for Denny Weston, if and when he ever comes out of that holy duck interview when Sheldon started making with a threat. Oh, if I'd had the least notion you were in such peril. I'd been worried to death. Mm. The peril didn't start until the next day, sweetheart. The next day? Yeah, that's when Brennus looked at me, squinted, and said, uh, you know, Al, this guy's got just the face for Brannigan's Bog, the whiskey that smells like old Ireland. Oh, how awful. Uh, fate worse than death, sweetheart, but that is all behind me, while directly in front of you is, of course, the... Hi, mm. <laughs> Yes, sir. I'll have it right away. The blonde, Sam. Yeah? What was she trying to do with a picture of Uncle Mike with the other girl at the station? You mean, why didn't she go to the police like any normal human being? Oh. Well, it's hard to say, F. She was really a sincere reformer. From here, it looks like she was trying to work up a partnership with the dead showgirl's brother... Maybe put the squeeze on Uncle Mike and force him to come across with names, numbers, and salaries of the members of his graft machine. Besides, uh... What? She was a woman. Come here. A mad, unpredictable, illogical creature. Mm. Oh, say. Effie Perrine, the non-alcoholic secretary that contains lanolin. Well, that's better than Brannigan's dog. A whiskey that smells like old Ireland. Sure, that's a fine and brought of a girl she are, and I'll be saying good night, sweetheart. The Adventures of Sam Spade stars Howard Duff as Spade, with Lorene Tuttle as Effie. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.